king's kid, yes I'm a king's kid My father is the king over everything So I will sing this song cause I know that I belong to the king of the universe I'm a king's kid, yes I'm a king's kid My father is the king over everything So I will sing this song cause I know that I belong to the king of the universe Ah, good day there King's kids Arnie here from Arnie's Shack. Our Bible story today comes from Exodus chapter 25. It's all about building a special house for God while the Israelites were travelling around in the desert. Uh, Anyway, uh, let's get on with it. G'day there boys and girls, welcome along to Balloon Kaboom, and again, I've got my friend here with me, Pastor Darren. G'day there Pastor Darren. Hi Arnie, hi boys and girls, so good to be back again. Uh, Now this looks interesting Pastor Darren, Uh, you've already made some balloons. Oh I've already started Arnie, yes I I got a head start, because I wanted to make sure I'd built a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a base. Okay. So I'm going to attach a base to this solid foundation, lovely. Golden base. Mm-hmm. That's a big clue. Okay. A golden base on a solid foundation. Because mm. now I have the solid foundation, mm-hmm. the base, I can build on that. Right. And the sides, yeah. that's a big clue. Can you guess what it might be? Mm. I mean, I'm not real sure. As you said, Arnie, I'm yeah. building some walls around the base. Walls around the base. Okay. Um, might be a spa bar. <laughs> a spa bar? Yeah. I don't have a whole water, this one. Okay. And round and round and round and round. <laughs> and round and round and round. I know that song. There. And put some gold edging. And gold edging around this edge. Gold edging, yeah. And gold edging on this edge. Right. And right to the other edge. And right to the other edge. What do you think it might be, boys and girls? I was thinking maybe a water tank, but it would leak because it's got lots of holes. Yeah, it might not hold water. No, so it can't be that. It needs a lid. Oh, a lid? Yes, big clue. I made a lid earlier. Oh, one you made earlier, look at that. Put the hinge on. The hinges, yeah, another hinge. Finally, Mm -hmm. a big clue, needs a lock on the front. A lock on the front. And there it is. There it is. I reckon it's a safe. Oh, you're close. Oh, I'm close? You're very close. Can you guess, boys and girls? Um, Well, the only other thing I can think of, then, is is maybe a uh, 
A treasure chest. That's right. It's a treasure chest. <laughs> so, um, a treasure chest needs treasures in it. Oh. There's none in there, I don't think. Let's have a look. No, that's empty. There's no treasure. We made a treasure chest, mm. but there's no treasure. I wonder no. where we could find some treasure, Arnie. Mm. You got treasure boys and girls to go into the treasure chest? Yeah, maybe they do. Um, but oh, I know someone who has lots of treasure. You know someone? You're going to go get some treasure? Yeah, no, no, Hans. Hans oh, got... Hans got treasure. Can you go find Hans and yeah. bring, bring us some treasure? Yeah, I'll go and find him because he, he collects treasure. Okay. Okay, Good. catch up past there, Darren. So Hans is going to bring us some treasure for the treasure chest, hopefully. Hans, where's, is Hans, are you there, Hans? Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to speak with you about cleanliness. King's Kids, when you get changed, do you just drop your clothes on the floor or do you put them in the washing basket? After eating, do you help wash the dishes? Cleanliness means your ability to keep yourself and the things around you clean. It has been proven that if you regularly spend a little bit of time keeping your house clean and tidy, you'll be less stressed. You'll be able to find what you need and get your work done quickly, all while staying healthy. So let's look at some things that you can do in your house to help keep it clean. Put things away as you use them. Avoid dropping them on the floor or letting them pile up. This prevents clutter that makes you feel like there's no room to move. It also means that dust will not build up. Sweep and dust your floors and furniture to remove dust that can cause breathing difficulties and allergies. And vacuum your floors if you have carpet. Wash your dishes and cooking utensils. Make doing the dishes right after dinner a regular part of your routine. Take turns with other family members. Wipe down surfaces with a disinfectant cloth to kill bad bacteria and germs. Make your bed as soon as you get out of it and wash your bedding regularly. Wash your clothes regularly to remove dirt and odours. Regularly open your windows and doors when appropriate to let fresh air and sunshine in. This helps to stop mould growing and freshens up the house. All of these things are a part of cleanliness and all of these are important in our health and well-being. So this week, think about what you can do to help keep your house clean. King's Kids, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. G'day there, King's Kids. Ranger Hardy here again to share with you some wonderful insights from God's creation. In our story today, we have seen how offerings, freely and happily given, were used to make something beautiful for God. Today, I want to show you a bird that freely gives to make a beautiful place for its mate. Have a look over here. Do any of you King's Kids know what this beautiful bird is? That's right, it is a male satin bower bird. In order to attract a mate, the male satin bowerbird does something pretty amazing. He creates a bower. The bower is an extraordinary structure that's only purpose is to provide a display stage for the male to attract a female's attention. This means it has to be pretty special. The male satin bowerbird willingly spends hours and days finding and bringing grasses, sticks and twigs to make his bower. Using only his beak, he carefully shapes it to make sure it is just right for the bird he wants to attract. To make it softer, every morning he will paint the inside walls with chewed leaves, mosses or flowers. Ha! <laughs> Sensational! But he is still not finished. To decorate his bower, the satin bower bird will find an array of treasured objects to place around it. His preferred colour, blue. In forest areas, his blue treasures will be blue feathers, berries and flowers. 
as well as other treasures, including snake skins and snail shells. Closer to humans, bower birds can find more blue objects, such as bottle caps, pen lids, and pegs. Hopefully, after all that giving, he will attract his mate. The King's Kids, our God gives us so many good things. Just like the Bowerbird, he goes above and beyond to show us he cares about us. As a sign of our gratitude, we can give back to him. We may not bring blue bottle top caps or flowers, but we can freely give tires and offerings, our time and our love. Just imagine what he could build with that. Sensational! Hello Kings Kids. Glad you could join me in my workshop today. My name is Grandpa John and I just love being out here in my workshop. This is one of my favorite places to be where I can make beautiful things just like the master carpenter Jesus did. And I can also read stories from my favorite book, the Bible. I always keep it right here on my bench are you ready for another story? Moses and the Israelites were in the desert. God had led them safely away from Egypt. And now Moses called all of Israel together for an important announcement. God has given me instructions for you so that we can build a tent of meeting for the Lord. This will be a special place where God will meet us and where we can worship him. Moses announced, for this is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, bring an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing, bring what you have. Bring your gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, your fine linen, bring goat hair, ram skins, leather, acacia wood, your gemstones, only bring what you are willing to give from your heart. The people listened to Moses and went back to find their gifts. More and more gifts were willingly brought to the Lord to be used to build his special meeting place. So much came that Moses had to give another order. He sent word around the camp to say, no man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. They already had more than enough materials to build God's meeting place. That's wonderful. The people of Israel loved God very much. And they showed that they loved God by giving what they had to build his meeting house. We can show God that we love him too. Giving is one way of showing we love and worship God. King's kids, God doesn't want us to give because we have to. He wants us to give willingly from our hearts out of love for him. Today's Bible verse comes from Exodus 25 verse eight. Have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Kid, my name is Mile. Our story today tells us about the time when lots of people gave little things to make something amazing. 
Today I am going to show you how to make a nature puzzle that uses many smaller parts to make one thing amazing. The things you'll need are a pencil or a marker, a piece of paper or cardboard and some nature materials like a heap of stones. First you need to draw the shape of a puzzle. I'm going to draw a heart. Once you're happy with your shape, go over it with a marker. Now it's time to use your nature objects to complete the puzzle. And then you can fill it up with the smaller stones. You could create lots of different shapes and see how you can fill in the pictures for each of them. Choosing a heart reminds us that when we are willing to give our time and talent to God, just like the Israelites did with the building of the tabernacle, together we, in our world, can create something beautiful too. Why don't you give it a try? Have fun. Bye, Kings Kids. There's Hans. Hi, Hans. Arne, I've been talking to you about finding some treasure. Do you have treasure to go into our beautiful balloon treasure chest? No treasure, that's right. Do you have any treasure, Hans? You do? Awesome. What have you got, Hans? Maybe it's some precious pearls or some gold or some silver. Or it, oh, oh, look at that. Hans has got some precious wood. Precious wood to go into our treasure chest. Yes, put those in the base. Oh, yes, look at that. Some precious stones and some precious, beautiful, smooth, carved, inlaid wood. That will be awesome in my treasure chest. Put that right in the middle with the precious stones. Oh, look at this. Beautiful, royal, purple fabric. Let's put that in. Oh, some golden fabric, beautiful. Lovely golden fabric and lovely blue fabric into the treasure chest. Oh, look at these precious stones. Quartz and crystal and all sorts of, oh, some green and some blue. Let's throw that in. Some beautiful pearls and gold. And we'll put those in. Oh, beautiful gold. Lovely golden pearls. Let's put those in. Oh, but, oh, look at this beautiful necklace. Beautiful. Is there anything else to go in, Hans? That it? Well, it's pretty full. That's some awesome treasure. Thank you, Hans. Can you go and find Arnie now to finish off Balloon Kaboom? Awesome. Bye, Hans. Now, wait for Arnie to come back. He'll see all this beautiful treasure. I think he's going to be pretty impressed. Look at all this beautiful treasure. Now I wonder where Arnie is. On the count of three, I want you all to call out for Arnie to bring Arnie back to finish off our balloon kaboom. So ready? One, two, three. Arnie! Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. <clears throat> oh, here he is. Yeah, He's here back. I here I am. Welcome back, Arnie. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. How did the hands go? Look in here, look in our treasure chest. Oh wow, look at that. Lots of wood and material and lots of lovely pearls and yeah. stones, all sorts of precious things to fill up our treasure chest. Wow, he has lots of uh, lovely treasures, doesn't he? 
That's right. Mm. I'm a little bit worried though. See all these blue stones? Yeah. Did you know that bowerbirds love blue? Ah, yeah, they do. Um, hopefully uh, the bowerbirds don't find it and they pinch it. That's right. We mm. saw a bowerbird earlier with all those blue things in his nest. He loves blue treasure, so we need to look after our yeah. blue treasure. Yeah, we better watch out for that. Did well, you know in our story today, yeah. everyone brought their, their best pearls and best gold and best silver and best wood and best material to help build a temple for the Lord? Right, yeah, I've read that story before. That's right. And so we've got all these beautiful things in our treasure chest, all very precious. Mm -hmm. uh, but Pastor Darren. Yes, Arnie? Uh, these, these are all just earthly things. Oh, they are, yeah, yeah. They're be but they're beautiful though. They are very beautiful, Pastor Darren. But these will all pass away one day and they'll be all gone. Um, there's one thing, though, that is the best treasure of all that lasts forever. The yeah. best treasure of all. I wonder what that might be. Have well, you got it, Arnie? I've got it right just back here. And okay. I'm going to go and get it. Okay. Just I wonder what it might be. Oh, yes, there well, it is. Well, Pastor Darren, there it is. That's the greatest treasure of all. That's right. The beautiful Bible in here you learn all about salvation, which is everlasting and eternal, the greatest treasure that all this can be sold, but this is something that never passes away. Well, that's right, Pastor Darren. So he puts one on top, Arnie? Oh, on top, yep, right on the top. Right on the top in our treasure chest. Yep, biggest and best treasure of all. Yep. God's Word. Hide it in your heart, boys and girls. Get mum and dad to read it to you or read it for yourself. In there you'll find the greatest treasure that will never pass away. Yeah, amen to that, Pastor Darren. So we'll close the lid because mm -hmm. now our treasure chest is nice and full. It is nice and full. Mm. Anyway, we've got to go now. So from balloon to boom, I will catch you next time. See you, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. Yeah, bye-bye. I might get this Bible out and see yeah. if I can find some treasure inside. Okay, lots of treasures in there. There's a chest full of treasures in there, Pastor Darren. There is, Arnie. Mm. Lots of beautiful pictures mm. and look at these beautiful words. Yep. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be where I am. Wow. And that, that, that'll be great because uh, there's going to be streets of gold. Hi Shane and Andy. Hi King's Kids. G'day Kyra. Yeah, hi Kyra. Today we're going to be doing another Bible discovery. This time it's going to be on Exodus 25 verse 8. Oh, excellent. Hey Shane, would you like to pray for us? Yeah, I can do that, Cora. Okay, now let's close our eyes and let's say a prayer. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Okay, so I think I'm going to start by reading this verse first. Have them make a sacred tent for me. I will live among them. Hey, Andy, do you want to read next? Oh, I can do that, Cora. Mine uses some different words to yours. Have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Shane, you can read now. Okay, I'll read from my grandma's Bible then. Um, and let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. Yeah, there you go. What do you think this verse means? Well, I think that this verse is talking a bit about that God wants us to have a special place where we know that when we go there, he will be there with us, even though he's with us all the time anyway. Mm, for the uh, Israelites, that was uh, their sanctuary, and, and maybe for us it's, it's church, but... Oh, I think it's my heart. If I treat my heart like a sanctuary where Jesus can live, he's going to be with me all the time. Yes, I think that it's about 
God giving us a special place to worship like our church so we can actually have a special time with him. Ah, cool. Oh, yeah, this is a great text, isn't it? Yeah, I agree with you, Kyra, that when we go into a special church, we know to be reverent and respect God because he is dwelling or living there while we're there. Well, that was a great discussion. I like studying with you guys. Hey Andy, how about you pray to finish? Oh yeah, it's been fun today, Kyra. I can pray to finish. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. The people of Israel loved God so very much and they showed that they loved God by giving what they had to build his special house. Uh, giving is one way of showing we love and worship God. Uh, we too can show God that we love him when we give back to him. Uh, God doesn't want us to give because we have to. He wants us to give willingly from our hearts out of our love for him. Uh, he has given so much to us. Uh, it is wonderful that we can give something back to him too. Uh, anyway, King's Kids, it's time to go now. I will look forward to catching up with all of you again next time. Uh, so take care, stay safe, and God bless. I'm a king's kid, my father is a 